So what I want to suggest is a way to use initiative as a tool to organize certain other events in your game for non-combat situations. It makes it fun, saves time, more importantly, keeps things organized for you, the DM. I'm gonna start with an example that I have successfully done, and then I wanna talk about a couple examples that I can see working in my head. And comment down below how you could use this in other ways. How can you utilize wisdom, charisma, and intelligence? Something worth trying, let me talk about it. If you want me to upload more content like this or the painting or more games, more like Fables of Refuge, you can make that possible by going to patreon.com slash fablesd20 and support the channel there. There are plenty of videos out there talking about how to speed up combat, how to speed up initiative. I've tried a lot of them out, not a lot of them stuck. <laughs> <laughs> but there are good videos out there like Professor Dungeon Master from Dungeon Craft, great content. Bob World Building, great content. All a bunch of great ideas. And I've taken a little bit and stuff that happens behind the DM screen, I've definitely saved. But when it comes to interacting with my players, changing the game system on them is not always easy. But what I wanna talk about is something that no one is really talking about. So I think it's important to talk about. Normally when combat starts in Dungeons and Dragons, you roll initiative. What that means is that we're going into a turn by turn based game so we can stay organized during the events of this combat. It feels very Final Fantasy. It totally works, it's totally fine. People who wanna complain about it can complain about it. Bless you, you come up with great ideas for solutions. So how rolling initiative works is we roll a d20, add that to our dexterity modifier, plus our proficiency. And that's your initiative. When you're dealing with combat, we use dexterity because it represents how fast, how nimble were you to react to the dangers that is combat. That rewards a certain subset of characters. Rogues because they're stealthy, or monks because they're literally super nimble. It doesn't reward a lot of other characters that their players have invested in other abilities, such as charisma or intelligence or wisdom, it has no effect in the combat, even though the spellcasters do a lot. In my dragon battle off camera, I, in the middle, had my players get stuck in a maze and I had them roll intelligence saving throws, which means intelligence plus proficiency. And then what I did was the Mercer style, 25 to 20, 20 to 15, 15 to 10, 10 to five, and everyone else. Instantly, once I started listing it that way, everyone knew that I just had them roll initiatives, but with intelligence. Because I don't believe dexterity is the right way to go into a turn-based system while in a maze. Intelligence made more sense. No one complained, everyone understood what was happening, everyone kept moving forward. And players that had invested in intelligence were able to go first and make the calls. If you're traveling through the wilderness or diving through a dungeon, you can do survival checks, but you can also just ask your players, what's your marching order? Unknown to them, you're using that marching order as an initiative. In another situation that I think this would work really great, let's say you walk into a party, a ball full of vampires, and you have to socially get your way through there to unlock certain information so that the rogue or the fighter can deal with stuff in a different part of the castle. You know, let's just say that's the thing right? Let's roll initiative to organize this. Let's just go into a turn-based thing and make sure that everyone has a chance to do something. And let's just roll charisma instead of dexterity. So charisma saving throw, boom, there's your initiative. What that instantly does is your bard or your sorcerer or your warlock now feel like the spotlight's on them because they have the higher chance of taking the lead on the situation. It makes sense. The situation is a ball, a courtship, a social interaction. Obviously, if you're just going to be role-playing, you're just going to be role-playing. But if organizing the situation helps, then this is the best way to do it. There's no, all right, who wants to go first? You? Yeah, you go ahead. None of that. None. <laughs> Roll charisma saving throw. Great. Warlock, you're going first. What do you do? How do you set the stage for this mission, for this encounter? You know, combat is usually around six seconds around. I would say a round of social interaction could be five to 10 minutes. 
you know, in game. So that way it's, okay, your turn. We rolled charisma, you're gonna walk up and talk to this person, okay. Everyone knows that once you're done, we're going to be moving down the line. People are paying attention a little bit more. And there's a system in the sense that once we get to the end of the round, it's your turn again, Warlock. What have you planned to do again on your turn? Same thing in combat. I would also use this if my players went to a library and I wanted to like, okay, what do you guys want to look up? We're like, everyone roll intelligent saving throws for initiative, and that way I can just go around the line. I could just go around the tape. I could. It'd be super easy, super simple, super quick. But on a meta level, we're playing a game, and it feels really good to roll dice, and it feels really good to know when your main ability is put on the spotlight. Like, oh, I've been investing in this for the whole campaign. I can't wait to do this. You get stuck in a mudslide or you're climbing up a, a mountain. Strength saving throws as the initiative. Your fighter is going to be all about that. I feel like what I've just said is very unstructured and it's just me throwing out this idea. But what are the points to what I'm saying? Using initiative as a tool under other ability scores utilizes more of the character sheet. It helps players that are kind of there just for combat or need a mechanical fix once in a while. They might love role play, but rolling dice and going into initiative feels really good to them. This gets that fix going without you having to always do combat. If you or a member of your party are neurodivergent, this is a great way to organize things for them to keep up in a social interaction. And finally, it's just fun. Think about it. You play D&D for so long, you're having a blast, you're having fun. Sometimes it's fun to mix things up. Sometimes like trying something that's based off the core mechanics that doesn't change it into a whole new game is a lot of fun. Something subtle, something simple. That's why I love the cover rules. Plus two to AC, plus five to AC. I use that stuff all the time in different situations because it's repetitive. If I keep repeating that same mechanic, my players memorize it and they learn and they benefit off it and then they start using different tactics against me. Great! Using initiative for different things will teach players to think that way for other situations. So when we all walk into a very suspicious situation, a player can go, can we roll initiative? to organize this. I as a DM will be like, yeah, sure. Uh, which kind of ability do you think is the most important to dictate the scene, to dictate the turn-based system? What do you want initiative to be? Because it doesn't feel like it's dex, doesn't feel like it's strength. And someone goes, it's wisdom. A lot of street smart stuff has to happen. All right, wisdom it is. Roll wisdom saving throws for your initiative. And if you have an initiative bonus for whatever reason, I allow that on top of it because it's initiative. So yeah, that's that's the idea that I am presenting. How to speed up non-combat scenes or how to make non-combat scenes more interesting, more fun, more gamey, more hands-on. I love role-playing. I love having a scene with my friend. I love figuring that stuff out and trying to work the social waters, especially as someone like myself. Sometimes though, on the other end, it's a lot for me to handle. And I just want you guys to go into initiative so that way I can just organize my thoughts and we can move by move, figure things out. So yeah, that's my idea of like how to speed up non-combat. It really, it's about how to utilize initiative outside of combat. How to use initiative as a tool for other situations other than just combat. If you disagree, let me know down below. If you have ideas on how you can go even further with this, also let me know down below. All right, I gotta go. I got other things I gotta do. I love you very much. Have a wonderful day. Say hi to your neighbor and don't forget, use your Thacko. Bye.